Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome again to another painting tutorial. Today we'll be painting a daffodil and I think this is the first time that I'll be doing this uh, or I'll be showing you a video or a painting video how to do this one because I've painted this one without a video before and it's on a relatively huge canvas. So today we'll be doing it on an A3 size canvas and we'll be doing a lot of yellow today. So here are the colors that we'll be using for today's painting tutorial. We have lemon yellow, tiny bit of red, titanium white, black, sap, green. So all the colors that I just mentioned will be listed in the description box below for ease of reference. And now I'm gonna background first my canvas paper. I'm using again an A3 size canvas paper, <laughs> canvas paper, and I've taped it on the surface that I'm working on. It's just that uh, the tape keeps on, um, uh, what do you call this? It's not that sticky. All right, so I'm going to background first, as I told you, and we'll be using some green and yellow and black and white. To make it more brownie, I'm going to add a little bit of red. Okay, and I want it to be more green, okay, like this and yellow. Just combination of everything. I'm gonna add more red. Okay, I'm gonna get try this one. Okay, perfect. This is just for the background color. Um, we will not be painting so much this area, the left side, because it will be used for the main subject. And I don't want to paint over it. Meaning, I don't want to do, uh, I don't want to waste my paint painting uh, on something that I've already painted on. What? <laughs> Did you get me? Sorry, I keep on hitting my camera. This is just for the background. If you don't want background, fine. You just uh, fast forward this video and move on to doing the main subject. Okay. Okay, I'll be adding some white to give light mm -hmm. I'll be getting some uh, black Just to darken this area. Again, it should be a little more of abstract type of background. I'm not really touching the this section. Okay. I'm just using some paints. That will suggest more abstract background. Doesn't really matter what background you use as long as you're happy with it you may or may not use any background it's up to you but if you ask for my suggestion i suggest you use a background all right now we're gonna sketch the subject which i'm so excited about i'm gonna use a small brush and I'm gonna use my, hmm. I'll be getting more yellow because I just ran out of yellow. So I'll be using yellow directly since the main color of the flower, daffodil is yellow. So I'll be dabbing onto my yellow now. Let's begin sketching it.
this is just the shape so don't worry too much for now you can worry later okay for now be at ease I hope we don't get to hear a lot of noise today because still you know my neighbor uh, it's been months since uh, they started uh, what they got re uh, what they call this it's like renovating renovating their house upstairs Okay, so that's basically the shape of the flower. Right. As you can see here, it's not placed on the center because I just love the effect of it, you know, when you don't place the subject right on the center of the material that you're painting on. It's just nice to look at. It's more dramatic, I think. Okay, now we'll still use our yellow, but this time I'll be using my bigger brush just to get more coverage and I'll be getting my yellow as I told you I'll be getting my white I'm getting some greens and I don't like it anyway I'll be getting my white this is just for the underpainting anyway you can add tiny bit of black just to tone down the color first let's begin Do. Anyway, it's the underpainting. So. so just continue painting the flower like this. Same thing over here. We're not really using super bright yellow just yet because the underpainting should be a little darker than the actual color or than the highlights i'm gonna make it more gray down here because it's not really receiving uh, light or too much light again i'm not really painting the center because it will be more of a bright yellow okay like that and now we're gonna allow this first to dry i'm gonna okay, you you may or may not wash your brush out but i suggest that you wash it out so that you remove the excess dull yellow because we'll be using some bright yellow i'll be getting my pure yellow i'll be adding a little bit of red Okay. And let's start creating the middle section. If your paint's still wet from the initial uh, underpainting, you can dry it first using a hair dryer. Me, I'm just trying to do wet on wet to save time. So 
So using this color yellow, it's more of warm, warmer yellow. I'm gonna start creating some details on the center. Right. Right here. Okay, now I'm going to use my pure yellow. Maybe add a tiny bit of white. And we will we'll paint the middle part. All right, just like that. Let me check. Perfect. Okay, and now let's go back to some dark yellow. So mix with mix it with red. It's more of orangey color, but the yellow must be more dominant. So it's like yellow orange. Just like that okay and I'll be using the same color um, right here okay just like that and I'll be getting some Right now, I'll be using a smaller brush. Okay, hmm. I'm thinking that before I move on to detailing much further, um, the flower, I'm gonna go to somewhere else, like do the leaves, something like that. So I'm gonna get my green while we're waiting i'm gonna get my black and tiny bit of blue i forgot to tell you we'll be using tiny bit of blue and white okay let's try Gonna get some white. And then black. I have to wet my brush, it's too dry. Okay. 
really want to maximize my time. That's why I started doing the leaves, the leaf while we're waiting for the flower to dry. Now I think we can go to the flower now. So I'm gonna get another brush, a cleaner brush, just to be sure that uh, it's not contaminated with other colors. I'll be getting some white because I already ran out of it. And using some white plus yellow. Okay, more white. More white, so it's like milky yellow. This will serve as a highlight. Just like that. So I'm doing some highlights first. By using yellow and white, okay, I'm not changing color here. I'm still using yellow plus white. I just, you know, I'm just, I just pray that it will not be too noisy in the background. Okay. Again, still using the same color. I'm going to tell you if I'm changing. like that Okay, just like that. Okay, now I'm gonna use my pure yellow.
but I'm also allowing some bit of white to mix with the yellow meaning I didn't wash my brush thoroughly start creating some details yellow and white Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of white just to really brighten this part. And I'm gonna make some overlapping yellow colors, just a tiny bit. Making brighter. Okay, now I'm going to use a smaller brush because it's kind of hard for me to get into those tight spaces. So I'm going to get my brown. So I'm just mixing my red, black, and yellow because I already have it here on my palette. I'm going to use this to make some details on some tight spaces. Also
Okay, now I'm gonna use the same color to separate petals. I'm gonna color this area with this color. Just to darken this part. a clean brush just to make this area more yellowy and by doing this I'm also thinning down the sketch line that um, I had especially for the separation lines meaning the lines that separates or the line that the lines that separate one petal from another it's your time to thin them down Milky yellow right here. This is to really give it some light play. to darken this area. that and using some more of orangey colors Some yellows to 
give it more brightness. So I'm adding a little bit of white right inside this daffodils, um, like the the cup of the daffodil. This one that I'm doing right here. And then let's apply some some yellows. that and then yellow and white let's just go back to some areas Some more pure yellow. Let me check. All right, I'm gonna outline this flower so that you can actually see the the shape. It's not showing at the moment simply because it's not outlined. Okay, I'm going to get my black. Let's start outlining this flower. We will go back to the background because as I always say, I really don't um like outlines like this one it looks but i have to do it because the background is slightly similar to the foreground you can actually use a black background but 
uh, I don't want to use a black background. I'm always using a black background. Okay, now using my ordinary brush, I'm just going to get my black, mix it with yellow to create some muted green colors. And I'm just going to use this as a continuation of our backgrounding. I'm going to make it so near the sketch line so that the sketch lines will appear as if part of the background. If you know what I mean, um, like that. Retaining the sketch line, uh, however, I'm darkening the surrounding areas. I hope I'm, I'm making sense. Remember that the background is a little abstractish, what I'm doing right here. So it's not really difficult for us to, yeah, like this. So just be um, relaxed when it comes to backgrounding. We're not doing any particular detail in the background anyway. And add a little bit of yellow just to make it something um, unidentifiable but you can actually infer from it that nature is in the background you know it's not something like a building or something like that it is also something nature connected or related it could be leaves it could be bushes it could be anything See, the difference is that you don't see the sketch lines, but it's there. All right, I'm going to continue right up here. Remember to make it quite near the sketch lines. Uh, that's too dark. Right, just like that. Getting my white, I want to brighten this area. I want to suggest some light going on. some relayering meaning we're going to paint again those areas that we highlighted I'm gonna get my white pure white this time remember that initially we were using yellow and white this time we're going to use just white
Okay, now I'm gonna use some yellow, pure yellow. I think I already ran out of yellow. I'm just going to apply it right on the center, almost glazing it like this. Yellows are usually translucent. I don't know if you noticed that. Once you mix it with white, it becomes um, uh, opaque, right? But usually, on its own, yellows are translucent. Brightening some areas here and there. highlights just around this uh, mouth I call it mouth <laughs>
Okay. Using some more yellow. Yellow plus black and then white to create that muted yellow color. Let's start coloring this petal again. Good. Okay. Let me check. I think I need to add some more um, light, okay? Especially the knees. We're not yet done with the knees, by the way. And wait, guys. Well, I'm waiting for the... Let's wait for the paint to dry a bit. Actually, I'm thinking of adding some more background. Hmm. What do you think? Yeah, I think I will add some more background uh, in details. I was about to say information. <laughs> okay. Hmm. All right, all right. I'm gonna make some more orange colors. Let's go around the the cup. Sorry about that. Down here. It's good. Okay, I need more white.
So I'm just using white, re-highlighting everything again. I mean, re-highlighting everything. Okay, now I, I know what to do so that it really pops out. We will do that later. This is good. Just use white. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of gray to give some folds and shadows. Also, right here, we need to add some dark colors so that it suggests some folds. And I'm gonna use some white, mix it with a tiny bit of green. Let's do some highlighting. and some yellow green color just like that like that I'm using this green while I'm at it to kind of make this side a little more green Actually, uh, what makes it green is not because it's actually green, right? But the absence of light and the actual color of the flower, which is yellow, makes it more greenish. If that makes sense. Have you tried combining yellow and black? Well, try it and you will come up with a muted green color. Just, just try it. Okay, now I want to use my watered down, watered down black, and I want to glaze, all right, some leaves. So I'm gonna get my black. 
Okay, again, we'll be watering it down or just use thin amount of paint. Just make this area quite dark. Also, this area. Alright. Like that. Wash your brush out. I'm gonna use my yellow. Pure yellow this time. And just go inside this um, pollen or cup. Remember to me to apply it quite mm, gently. All right, just like that. I'll be using more brown, so it's like yellow, red, black, and a little bit of white. Using brown, let's add some more browny spots. Some more yellow. Give it more light.
my white. There's so many layers. Um, so you have to be really patient with this one. All right, let me check. Or maybe not yet, not yet. I'm just gonna darken again this um, petal down here, but not too much. Remember, we still wanna see some yellow going on right here. If we use too much dark colors, uh, it just doesn't uh, look like a flower anymore. Let me check. Okay, maybe this part as well. Alright. Okay, this is way, way better. Right, guys? This is so much better than earlier. Okay, I'm gonna get my white. Yeah, this is so much better. Finally. Okay. Some more details. All right, I think this is okay now because uh, if you know me, 
I will actually do more detailing. Right. I think I can sign this now. I'm just fixing some things. Okay, I'm gonna sign this now. And for the signature, I'm just gonna use Y right here. I'm gonna sign right here. All right, we're done. We're done, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you like this one. <laughs> and if you're painting along with me, let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, if you've painted along with me in the past, please let me know as well. See you in my next one. Bye, guys. Love you.